to the virtual green room. My name is Jackie Host, and today I'm bringing you another shaving video. My choice of soap today is going to be Declaration Grooming and Chatillon Looks. Um, this is Yuzu Rose Patchouli. The scent of this is just lovely. It's very well blended, as you would expect, by Chatillon Looks. It's a citrusy, floral, with a hint of earthiness. It's absolutely wonderful. Uh, with that, I have the matching toner as well. So I'm gonna be using that today, which is here. I had a pretty bad shave yesterday and it's left me with some irritation. But I have an event tomorrow, which I will need to shave for. So this is, this is what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna go with a very, very, very mild shave today. This is the Supply Single Edge. And this is using the number one plate. Now this is possibly the mildest razor I own. It's either that or the 0.68 of the home like start razor. But I'm gonna go with this because I just fancy using the supply single edge razor today. So uh, the brush I'm gonna be lathering everything with. It has to be right, it matches perfectly. This is the cool brush I recently got from That Darn Rob and inside the knot I have is a V4 tip. Um, this is a 28 V4 tip. So let's uh, load up here. So what's the time here? I'm gonna load for a minute. Or at least a decent amount of time. You can really easily overload this. Because the soap itself is very, very soft. So we're just gonna give it a decent load. Not let it um, get really gloopy because this, this base can saturate very, very quickly. Let's keep it going here. Oh, wonderful scent. If anyone that hasn't smelt this and can get their hands on, on one, absolutely do that. Going. So the issue I've found, because it's not so dense, it really can hold a lot of lather. So I think we're okay here, I'm gonna go with that. Let's uh, get off the glasses and wipe the face and we'll get to lathering. By the way, don't fuck about with blades. Just chop my finger off. <laughs> I'm joking. I definitely cut it though. So the issue here, and the issue generally arises when, uh, actually let me go get a towel. Sorry about that. So the issue here generally arises when I've overshaved, which I did over there, I overshaved with a straight. But now I have a social convention tomorrow, which I should shave for. What do I do? I mean, I have to shave, but my skin is irritated. Surely it would make sense to just leave it a day. I don't like to do that. So what I'm gonna do here, is I'm gonna go for the mildest shave I can and go as careful as I can on that side. This is such a unique scent. I, I don't think I've ever smelled anything else like this. It's almost gourmand in a way. Dip in the brush here. This is in uh, Declaration's Milk State Base. Which is highly regarded by many as one of the best around now. And myself, I would say that too. It's very, very good. So 
So in this video, or at least for the duration of my shave, I'd like to talk about something specific. I want to talk, talk about buying disorder. Um, and what, what do you think I mean by buying disorder? What I mean by buying disorder is someone who in this specific hobby, we're going to talk, to, talk about it relevant to this hobby, is addicted to buying new gear. And for some of the more casual shavers or casual hobbyists looking at this, they're like, nah, no one has that. Trust me, it happens. It happens a lot. I wouldn't quite describe myself as that. However, I do know people that have really, really struggled to stop their buying because it's weird. Because although you may have disposable income, that disposable income probably shouldn't go in shaving gear past the point. I mean, even, even I look at my shaving gear sometimes and think, what the hell have I done? Like, why have I done that? It happens. And it's really easy to, easy to happen too, because we have a community that is heavily based around what you're using. There's some people that don't particularly care and fucking, you know, kudos to them. You know, I, 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 I commend that because I know people that will, anything new, any new razor, any new soap, any new brush, whatever, they will jump on it and they will spend the money. Now, let, let's go over this first. Is that a bad thing? Um, no, but it depends on your actual responsibilities for, for your life, you know, I mean, if you're, if you're a father or you're you know, being fair to women, if you're, if you're a mother and you're in this hobby as well, and you're be being irresponsible and spending too much money, then I would construe that as a bad thing. But if you're a, a guy without with very few responsibilities and you want to spend a lot of your money on this, then I guess so be it. But that then comes down to, well, is it worth it? My answer is absolutely not. Um, although I've spent a fair amount of money myself, the amount of things that I've had the ability to try tell me consistently that um, regardless of what new comes out, yeah, it's better. I'm not going to say that it's not better because a lot of it is better. But is it so much better? that you can't go without it, that you absolutely have to shave with that in every shave, not at all. And the reason being is because a good friend of mine called DK, he's recently started a channel and this got me thinking. He's using soaps that a lot of people wouldn't use. Um, so same as IMCDB. I, I've recently started watching IMCDB again and he was using a, uh, a soap from Razor Rock from seven years ago. Now, there are some people that, oh, it's old, I, I won't use it, I want to get the new version of it. Did it shave him? It did. And that is ultimately the most important thing. If they were good then, they are good now. And our skin chemistry hasn't changed over the space of seven years to say this isn't good enough for us now, but it was good for us then. So why do we spend all this money? And I think a lot of it is there's, there's a degree of inclusivity within this community to where just but buying mania is massively accepted. Now, I've had conversations with my wife about me buying stuff, and honestly, I'm in a lucky position where I can write a lot of stuff off on my taxes, because this is my full-time job. Shaving is my full-time job. For all of you that aren't that fortunate, I would highly recommend you think again, because I, I can guarantee to you, although having that new soap is fantastic, it's a cool experience to have, and by all means, I cannot tell you not to buy it, what I can say is it's not worth it because whatever soap you currently have and you're currently shaving with, if you're if you're getting bad shaves, it's probably with all due respect down to you and not that soap you're using. Um, for example, this 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 razor burn I had on my neck isn't down to the fact that the soap I was using was bad. It was down to the fact that I had really shit technique. Um, I was using a straight, and I got a little bit overzealous and decided to do more than I should, got a bit overconfident, and I gave myself razor burn. Now, that would have happened if I was using, 
Holy Cow's new bass, or I was using Parasso. Ultimately, it comes down to the fact that I had bad technique and I gave myself razor burn. I, I don't want people to think your gear will give you better shaves. When, I mean, th there's, there's a case to say, um, do you need to buy loads of expensive shit? No, but I think gear to a certain point will help you because I don't think, but then will it? Because I can guarantee there are still people out there using their Van der Hagen razor they bought from Walgreens or something and they're getting perfectly serviceable shaves. And who am I to say you're doing it wrong, you know? Yeah, I'm using this brush that cost me $160 and I'm using a razor that costs $100 and a soap that costs 30 or whatever, but if they're getting perf perfectly serviceable shaves out of gear of a fraction of the price, then frankly, I'm the idiot because I have spent all this money. Now, I think in order to justify this, we have to call this a hobby because if we don't, then you're buy then you're spending loads of money on things that are just at that point, they're utilitarian items. I need shampoo, I need shower gel or whatever, I need deodorant. Um, I think that's important because I've spent a lot of money in this hobby. And like I said, I, I call it a hobby now, because it is, it's my hobby. Um, it's also my job. Where are we in terms of... Yeah, we're good, we're gonna share with that. It's my hobby, it's also my job. I I do things outside of carb shaving responsibilities that uh who that I don't need to and I don't get paid for and it is related to wet shaving like the podcast I started this, I don't get money for this. Everything I buy is something I'm interested in and if I get it for free I'll tell you because that's that's how I roll. And I think that should stay consistent, by the way. Anything that's been given to you for free and you're giving an opinion on it, I think uh, you should be in a position where you have to tell some, to tell your audience. But that's that's a, that's a fight for another day. Happy with that? Yep, yeah, let's shake with that. Any more hydration of milk steak? And it collapses a little bit. So let's go back to the original point then. So the buying disorder. I think a lot of it is the fact that it's accepted. And I think another part of it is we all want the latest and greatest. I massively respect people that could care less or couldn't care less, as English people would say, about having the latest and greatest. Which is why I have utmost respect for my friend DK. He doesn't give a shit and all power to him. Do I give a shit? I don't know, honestly. Because the prospect, it sounds stupid, but the prospect of me using something for a few days actually excites me. I really enjoy when I go traveling and I can use the same gear for a few days straight because it's refreshing. As odd as it sounds, I'm constantly chopping and changing. I'm not quite getting used to anything. And frankly, although that makes channel content unique, it, it puts me in a situation where I'm, I'm still getting to use variety, yes, but at the same time, I don't really put good use into anything I spend all this money on. And I think that's not a smart decision for myself because frankly, if something cost me $30 or $40, I, I'm not exaggerating. I've used quite a lot of those soaps once. I, I can see a lot of soaps that I've only used once. And maybe they were purchases that seemed like a good idea at the time. But really, should I have bought them? No, you know, I, I think I could have done a lot more with that $40. I could have taken my wife out for dinner I could have uh, saved it, you know, for more important things, but I didn't. And I bought, I bought something that, frankly, I I will probably enjoy again one day. But for the amount of money that it cost at that time, in my opinion, it's not worth it. Now, then you say you're you're probably the worst proponent of what you're saying now, because everything you use is new, and everything is everything is uh, 
expensive. Not everything, but m most of the stuff I use is. And to that, I'm gonna say, although I'm addressing the problem, I'm not saying I don't have the problem either. I'm saying as a, as a community, a lot of us have this issue. And yes, it's probably, look, you can see the irritation here. <laughs> Trust me, that $700 razor didn't help me then. <laughs> In fact, if I was shaving with a D89, I probably wouldn't have done that. So, remember that. Your gear, is, your gear doesn't shave you. Your technique is the thing that shaves you. And where having decent gear can help you to a degree, like, you know, as you're learning, slicker soap will probably help. But I was using one of the slickest soaps I possibly could have, and frankly, in that situation, it didn't help me. So it was my fault. And uh, I, I love this hobby because it... Well, I like this community because people are open to conversations like this. I'm not trying to say to people, if you spend money, you're, you're doing something that's morally repugnant and you shouldn't do it. Well, all I'm saying is, is be more mindful of your purchases because I've wasted a hell of a lot of money. But at certain times now, I wish I had back. And uh, I don't. It's, it's, all, it's all been spent. Yeah, I could sell it and buy, sell, trade or something, but it's not the same thing. Because I, I can guarantee you at that time that money would have been pretty useful. And like I said, you can you can tell me to sod off what you like. But I think it's important that people understand that having the new stuff isn't the be all and end all because at the end of the day it all shaves you. And especially if it's in something that's artisanal, it probably does a good job. See, now I've overhydrated this a little bit, and that's what I do, but that's okay, you know? Don't uh, quite look at the appearance of your lather and think if it doesn't look thick and voluminous, it's not gonna do the trick. So I'll tell you that, I'll tell you something else. There are products like Dr. Carver's Shave Butter by Dollar Shave Club that is just slick and it does an amazing job. So does this razor actually, it's a pleasure to use. It's very easy. Very comfortable. and it's giving me a great shape. But I would agree, if you're happy with what you're spending, who am I to tell you not to? All I'll say is if you're gonna spend that money, buy a card. <laughs> I'm only kidding, I'm only joking. before people actually take me seriously. What I will say is before you do buy soap that's really expensive and you don't need it, ask yourself, do I need it? Is what I'm using now or does the collection of soaps I'm using now lack in something this thing gives me? And if it, if it does, then by all means, make the purchase. But it ain't the be all and end all, I can promise you that, guys. I've been very careful on my neck here because I can feel that it's irritating still. Yeah, we're gonna go with that. Play it safe. You know, I'm not gonna have anyone come up to me and uh, get a credit card on my cheeks and, you know, rub it in or anything. I just thought it's important to have that conversation. And yeah, I get caught up in it too, don't get me wrong. There's nothing wrong with spending money on something you enjoy doing, but, 
uh, remember that having the latest and greatest isn't the be all and end all of this hobby. I enjoy watching guys that will shave with anything and have a perfectly serviceable, serviceable shave, not think any of the greatest. Like, don't get me wrong, I think there are some things that have been bought out recently that I consider objectively better, but then who am I to say that? You know? Uh, use what you like. Use buy what you think is worth the money. Never feel because it's new that you have to have it. Unless it's something you love, you know? I won't ever, I won't ever tell you what to spend your money on because I'm not a dick. But just, just think about it. That's what I've started to do recently. I've stopped pulling the punches. Kind of what I've done is I used to pretty much buy all the soaps under the sun. What I do now is I keep a certain limit of soaps in my den that I would say, okay, if I exceed this limit, I have to, I have to let some go. Uh, I think for me, that's the best way of maintaining, uh, I keep about 40 soaps. And to be honest, even that I think is way excessive, you know, way excessive. Okay, let's uh, rinse the face and we get to toast. So understandably, I've left quite a bit on this side, but that's okay. Uh, I can get that tomorrow or the next day. Yeah, look at that. Some pretty bad irritation over here. I didn't quite see it because of the growth, but I'm happy that it doesn't feel any more irritated. Let's use the uh, Chatillon looks. Post shave toner. I've heard some amazing things about this. I've heard, I've seen places that suggest that you uh, apply it with slightly damp hands. So we're going to do that. Hands are slightly damp, not not wet, but damp. So let's undo this. It has a useful restrictor there. So this is alcohol free, and I, I've said I I much prefer that. Scent is wonderful. Well, so I've used toners in the past, specifically Holy Cow's toner. And I've, I've spoke to someone recently and discussed the differences between the two. And they, they, they told me that they feel like Holy Cow's toner is like putting um, water on your face. It doesn't feel like it's doing anything. I didn't quite understand them at the time, but I'd say now I do because this is this feels like it's doing something to my skin, like it's soaking in my skin and it's nourishing it. We've had a fantastic chat today, guys. Let me kind of go over what I use today and uh, I'll let you go. So this is Yuzu Rose Patchouli by Chatillon Lux and Declaration Grooming up here. I love this scent. If you get the chance to try it, absolutely. And I use that with the uh, matching aftershave toner here. This scent is lovely, by the way. It's a... Uh, it's a good six or seven as well. I used the matching brush. I don't I don't have a name for this brush. What should I call it? I'll let one of you guys name it. Um, really nice brush that made by that dumb Rob, knotted by my good old good old pal Milton from Turn and Shave. And my razor of choice was possibly my mildest razor and still one of my favorites. I've changed a lot of the stuff in the den in terms of hardware. I've always kept this guy around because I love shaving with it. This is the Supply Single Edge and I was using it on the number one blade. Uh, a few plugs. Uh, probably before this video, you're going to see a giveaway video from me. Uh, enter it, please. It'll probably be the video beforehand. As I said, I'm looking to get it uploaded tomorrow. Um, it's Wednesday as we speak. This will be uploaded on Friday more than likely. Please enter. I've got some really cool stuff to give away. Remember, I work for Carve, so... I'm going to chuck a razor in there for you guys. Uh, so, you know, if you want to try the brass razor, absolutely enter that giveaway. There's a few stipulations and you'll be able to refer back to my YouTube video or the Instagram post. Check out the Razor Burn podcast that I do with Heather Melton from Zingari Man. She's become a very good friend of mine and that gives us the opportunity to have some very good conversations. We have some fantastic guests lined up. We have Michael Friedberg lined up in the next episode. And I'm not going to give away who the episodes after that are because you should tune in and have a look. My name is Jack, your host from The Virtual Groomer. Whatever you are in the world, have a wonderful day. Goodbye for now.